good morning. Well, it's coming up to midday on Sunday, July the 14th. And I'm just setting off for an overnight wild camp. I'm quite excited about sharing this trip with you. I'm going to try and cram quite a bit in, actually, without actually rushing it. So this afternoon, I'm going to go and visit a dam which was breached by severe weather in 1917 and rebuilt in 1920. Then I'm going to go and visit Alfred's Tower. I'm going to walk up Alfred's Tower and share the amazing views with you at the top. I've been up there a couple of times before, but not for quite a few years. Then I plan to do a crafty wild camp nearby. On my way back to Bath, I'll visit her castle with a moat in a very picturesque location. And then finally, I'm going to visit a church which is disused with the Norman Tower. It's actually situated in a present day farmyard. There's my bike all laden up with front and rear panniers. I'm on a lovely network of lanes. I'm just going to head around the outskirts of Froome and then down towards Maiden Bradley. And then I'm going to get on some very minor roads to go and visit the village of Gasper and the dam, my first point of interest. I'm now heading on some really quiet lanes between Norton St Philip and the outskirts of Froome, just approaching Lullington and this really nice waterfall. It's an old water mill I believe. Lovely spot. Well it's 2.15 now and I think I've arrived at the first of my destinations, Gasper Dam. I'm just south of Starahead House. I'm still on the Starahead Estate, I think. Do you know what? I live about 20 miles away and I've never been here before. So I don't know much about this story. I came across it on the Alfred's Tower website, so I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. So very briefly, I read that this dam breached in 1917 and it was repaired in 1920. Whether that was to do with the First World War delaying the repair or not, I do not know. Well, it's quarter to three now and I've arrived at my destination, Alfred's Tower. So I dropped down to Gasper Dam, took a minor road, which was really nice. And then as it veered off to the right, you bear left and it brings you up quite a steep track, brought me in here. And there's the main road there going back along to Kilmington. That's the way I would have come in. That way is a very steep hill just down near Alfred's Tower itself. So I'm going to go along there, hopefully go inside, walk up to the top, because it really is right on the edge of a steep hill. There's fantastic panoramic views up there. looking back down this is the way I approached so I came through these woods and there's the track that I came in on there and then it would go across to the car park on the other side of a minor road running alongside and then I walked down here so I'm looking towards Glastonbury Tor and I've just noticed to the right of it in the far distance are the very distinctive buildings of Hinkley Point Power Station so just a little bit of background information about Alfred's Tower and if it appears that I'm reading from notes that's because I am actually. So it was built between 1769 and 1772 and it was actually built by a very wealthy banker although it's widely associated with King Alfred and in 1944 a plane from the American Air Force that took off nearby from Zeal's Airfield crashed into it and caused substantial damage. It's three-sided, it's actually hollow in the middle. In fact, you can witness that here. You can hear echoes coming right up from the ground floor. And it's reputed to be built three-sided because it was 
on the boundary of three separate counties, although that fact is disputed. So once again, I'll put a link to my source in the description below this video. So some more information about Starahead Estate in general and King Alfred's Tower in particular. It says, King Alfred's Tower, the ultimate status symbol. The creation of huge estates was a display of wealth in Georgian society and Starahead was no exception. Henry Horde II was a well-educated man who was passionate about history. He admired King Alfred as a true English king who won a great victory over the Danes with a small army to keep England free. The battle took place in AD 878. King Alfred the Great raised his standard and rallied his troop near to where the tower stands. Here's a reference to the airplane crash into the tower. In 1944, an American plane crashed into the tower. The top 10 metres had to be rebuilt. So I purchased my first piece of camping equipment for quite a few years this week. So first of all, let me tell you what it is and then I'll explain why. So it's a stick camping table. It's just a piece of plastic with a rubberized grip on the top. And there's two telescopic spikes that actually pierce into the ground and then just go up into an inset underneath the table. I got it for millets. It's listed as £4.50, but with my youth hostel discount, I've got it for £4.05. So now let me explain why I've got it. Up to now, because I camp wild a lot, or even on campsites when there's level ground, often I find myself putting my cup and my can of drink and coffee, etc. into my shoes. So my initial thoughts are very positive. It doesn't look too bad. It actually feels quite sturdy. How long it lasts, I just simply do not know. I think it's going to be good for eating my meals on as well. So it, so it weighs 300 grams, which is about a third of what other portable tables weigh. And they also look very, very complex, almost over designed. It's now nearly 6 p.m. I'm at the foot of Alfred's Tower. It's been closed two hours now. <laughs> That's my camp location. So I'll just run through the setup of the stick table. As you can see, it's a plastic formation. It's got this rubberized grip at the top. And then just these two poles, which hook into the bottom. You just literally press one in the ground put the other one in top and then combine they fit in the table like that and there it is in place my dinner table there's a few people walk by since I've set the tent up mostly couples walking their dogs they've all sort of wished me a good evening and bon appetit and mentioned what a lovely spot it is hope it comes across that I'm a responsible camper certainly the number one rule is leave no trace so the tower is triangular and the middle is hollow and that's right up the top of it you can tell that because you could actually look through a grate at the top look right down and see the light coming in the door which is on the eastern side but you could really hear the echo of people coming up and down the stairs like a um, like a sound tunnel so I'm now on the western side of the tower you can see where the trees are forming the shade and where the sun's still above the tree line catching the tower is starting to slightly turn orange I'm hoping if there's a good sunset that's going to be quite spectacular later on I'll be back round here in a couple of hours time So it's now 10.15pm, this is a lovely bluey grey sky as the sun sets, there's a full moon risen, 
on my right hand side behind the trees and this is the view looking westwards at the tower it looked fantastic as the sun set it's sort of got an orange glow on the western side it's pretty fantastic now this is the view of my tent underneath the tower see the reflective dots on the guy ropes and then look at the side of my bicycle that's the side walls of the tires lighted up may just see the full moon has risen and it's shining just briefly through the trees there I reckon about an hour, hour and a half, and that's going to be bathing this campsite in moonlight. Just hear a slight rustle in the tops of the trees. The wind's died down a lot now, but the tower just looks absolutely amazing. Well, if that's not Isengard, then I don't know what is. Wow. So it's now approaching 11 p.m. The sky is still bluish, greyish, not dark yet by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just sat in one of the corners, the little ridges of the three sides. I'm just getting out of a little bit of breeze that's picking up. This is actually fantastic. It just makes me think of Isengard from Lord of the Rings. So it's now 11pm and I'm just sat in the porch of my tent. It's still quite bluish, the sky outside. Bluey grey, certainly not dark yet by any stretch of the imagination. About 9.30 I was just sat outside my tent as the sun was going down, watching the tower sort of reflect all the orange sunlight. And a four-wheel drive drove along the big wide grassy avenue. I think it was a National Trust vehicle. I just nodded at them and waved because they just came along and circled the tower and used it as a U-turn to drive back. I didn't even come over and say anything. I think hopefully it's obvious that I'm not causing any trouble and hopefully it's apparent that I'm a responsible camper. So I'm going to hit the hay quite soon. Hopefully I'll sleep well tonight. I positioned the tent so it caught the last of the sunset but also hopefully it's going to get the sunrise and warm the tent up so if there is a little bit of overnight condensation hopefully that will dry that out and even if it doesn't just a few yards away we'll be catching the sun so I'll say good night see you in the morning <laughs>